Hello and welcome back to 27 Fox Place. Most of my daily reset is all done and I have a few things to do in the kitchen today, but I wanted to take care of a few things outside before it gets hot. And it rained again this weekend and September is typically a very dry month here. So rain this time of year is very surprising and we replaced the furniture covers just before the tropical storm that we had last month and already we're getting plenty of use out of them. And we leave the furniture out year round because we don't have anywhere else to store them and the cushions are water repellent but not waterproof and if they get too much rain it can take a few days for them to dry out enough to use them so we like to cover them up to keep them dry and it's nice to have the covers to keep the furniture dry so that they're ready to use but it can be a chore to cover everything up and then fold up the covers to put them away so we usually leave them on unless there's nice weather in the forecast and last year the furniture stayed covered up almost all season because we got so much rain last winter and it looks like this year will be more of the same. I was on a plane to California I had all the time I'd ever need Did you even know I was looking for you? I think that I was hiding in between didn't get a whole lot of rain so everything is already dried out and after I get the covers put away I just have some light pruning to do and I've been experimenting with a few new plants and overall we've been really happy with the new plants that we potted up on the patio and it gives me an excuse to spend more time outside but there's a few plants that aren't doing as well as I'd hoped and this is the first time that I've tried to grow bacopa and it was doing pretty well but then I noticed it started to die back after the big storm we had and if it doesn't get enough water it stops blooming but it also needs to dry out between waterings and between all of the rain and the cooler temperatures we've had lately I don't think it's had a chance to dry out and I need to trim out the dead parts of the plant so it looks a little better and hopefully I can get it to rebound. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day Trying to make this darkness go away I'll paint with colors And I'll sing until my lungs give out mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the sun shine at the beginning of the summer, the verbena in these pots starts out lush and overflowing and then they slowly dwindle by the end of summer. <laughs> and the summer months are consistently hot and dry, so my biggest challenge is making sure that the pots get enough water. starts to fade feels like things are gonna go my way i'm gonna let the sun shine in the day i'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke and i will try to fix what has been broken and take this weight off my shoulders cause i know yesterday ain't coming back Gonna let the past stay in the cold I'm gonna listen to the ocean
and this pot is much worse than the other and the larger pots and the hanging baskets are attached to a drip system and having the drip saves time so that I don't have to water quite as much but the larger pots don't get quite enough water in the summer months and I need to change the emitter so that these pots get more water and because this pot gets more sun than the pot on the other side of the patio it dries out faster but we also had a problem with the drip in this pot and I didn't notice until the plant started to dry out. Most of the breakfast dishes have been taken care of already, but there's still a little bit of cleanup that needs to be done. And we load up most of the dishes directly into the dishwasher after every meal, but we always leave any pans that we use on the stove to let them cool down a bit before we clean them. And I'm just using a paper towel to soak up the excess bacon grease in the pan before I wash it out. And there's just a few things I left in the sink that I need to wash up by hand and I don't want to put the clean dishes in a dirty sink so I use a soapy sponge to wash out the sink before I wash them and most of the time I wash them up while I'm in the kitchen but if I need to I leave them soaking in soapy water until I can take care of it and during the work week we're usually home only for one meal but we're in the kitchen a lot more when we're home on the weekends <laughs> so it can seem like we're in the kitchen all day long long and my husband and I eat our meals together when we're home together and we both share in the cleanup and we always try to clean up the kitchen as we go so we wipe down the countertops and put the dishes directly into the dishwasher so that the kitchen is already put back together before we sit down to eat and by that time the pans and the stovetop have had a chance to cool down enough to clean them. Cleaning up the stove after we use it helps to keep the foods and grease from getting burnt on so it's easier to keep it clean. So we try to wipe it down after every use and stainless steel is easy to scratch and if there's any crumbs on the stove I try to wipe away the loose bits before I clean it and once the stove top is clean I use a microfiber cloth to dry it off. And I don't normally have to clean the stove grates every time I clean the stove. Most of the spills burn off the grates so there's not much left to clean. And the grates are cast iron so having a light coat of oil on them is beneficial. But we made bacon this morning and the splatter left too much grease on the grates. And we usually cook bacon in the microwave and cover it with a paper towel to contain the grease splatter. But I decided to use the stove today and it made a mess. And we do have a splatter screen but I just didn't think to use it today. So before I put the grates back on the stove, I just used a little dish soap to break up the excess grease. Whisper the word Maybe the sun will spread 
spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope. And I need to put out a fresh towel before I dry the dishes and put them away. And I usually don't take the extra time to dry the dishes by hand. I prefer to let the dishes air dry before I put them away, but there's only a few things left to dry off and I need to get them out of the way. And of course, throughout the day, we're constantly wiping down the countertops to pick up any crumbs and spills. And when I close up the kitchen at the end of the day, I like to use Methods Granite Cleaner on the countertops, but I also need to move everything out of the way and clean behind everything. And there's a few other things that I like to do in the kitchen on a weekly basis, like cleaning the backsplash and the cabinets. And it's much more manageable to spend a few extra minutes to wipe down a few of the cabinets or a section of the backsplash when I clean up in the kitchen than to try to clean everything all at once. So throughout the week, I usually work on one section of the kitchen at a time, but I've been neglecting the kitchen this week. So I just need to wipe everything down and get back on track. What if you're sweet? Nets could reach everyone, there'd be no wars. And the problem with the kitchen is that it doesn't just get dusty, it gets greasy. And microfiber removes germs, bacteria, and cleans away the greasy grime that builds up in the kitchen. So I like to use a damp microfiber cloth to wipe everything down. And for the shiny surfaces like glass and stainless steel, I use a dry microfiber cloth to remove the water spots. Stand on the opposite shore Hello, Ramona I reach through mysterious ceilings My holy hope I look for the things I don't know Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know We're all in this, I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know Microfiber cloths have tiny loops in the fabric that trap dirt and bacteria and they get washed away with water, but they don't actually kill germs and bacteria. So it's important to flush out the microfiber with clean water to wash away the particles that get trapped inside the fibers. And I guess you always seem to know Hello, Ramona. I push back the serious All in this, 
When the coffee grounds make their way into the water tank, they can clog up the intake. And so I try to rinse out the water tank every week or two. And I just use the hose on the faucet to flush out the tank. It's hard to find perfectly ripe avocados, so we leave them out on the countertop to ripen, and once they're ripe, we can move them into the fridge, and ripe avocados last longer in the fridge because the colder temperatures slow down the ripening process. not much room in the dishwasher so I'm going to add a few more things so that I can run it and it'll save a little time if I don't have to wash everything by hand.
Most of the backsplash only needs to be cleaned once every week or two, but there are some areas that need to be cleaned more often, and the areas closest to the stove get more grease buildup, so I usually clean the backsplash behind the stove on a daily basis. The kitchen cabinets are another thing that didn't get done this week, but that's not something that I wanted to spend time on today, so when I don't have the time to clean all of the cabinets or wipe down all of the appliances, I just wipe down the areas that need it the most, and the dishwasher and the cabinets directly under the sink get splashed with water and everything else from the kitchen, so it's another place that usually needs a little bit more attention. I love to watch the hummingbirds outside this window and it's hard to believe that such a tiny creature can eat so much and we've been getting more and more hummingbirds lately and trying to keep the feeders full is becoming more of a challenge. Hummingbirds are very territorial and one bird will guard a feeder to keep other birds away so having more than one feeder can make it harder for one bird to guard a feeder and we have the feeders spaced far enough apart that one bird can't guard them all but close enough together to prevent another bird from guarding one of the other feeders and if I let the feeders dry up the birds will move on and the birds don't need bright colored nectar to be attracted to the feeders but I've been adding colored to the nectar so that I can see when the feeders are getting low. But I also want to get away from using synthetic dyes, so I've been experimenting with hibiscus powder to tint the water just enough so that I can easily see when the feeders need to be refilled.
And that's all for today. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications before you go. And thank you so much for spending your time with me today and I hope to see you next time. Despite all, all you're my best friend